Cups up. Shout out to the Morning Word crowd. God bless you. God bless America. June the 1st, 2021. And uh, we thank you for joining us live this morning or catching us, uh, be it as it be for some of you, uh, later and recorded. Thank you for being with us. Uh, shout out to uh, all of our first responders, to all of our school teachers, to all of our military personnel. God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. <clears throat> this morning, our morning word is against all odds. Have you ever felt like that? Against all odds. I remember when we were playing ball and uh, all the way back in elementary school, it didn't matter if it was kick, pin, softball, whatever it was, you chose up teams. <clears throat> How many of you know what it's like to be the last one chosen? It kind of tells a story without saying any words, doesn't it? And so uh, we're going to read about a guy here whose name was David, who, were, who ascended to the throne and became the greatest king in Israel's history, uh, save the coming king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, David fought against all odds all of his life. He was, it was against all odds until God, <clears throat> until God uh, put him on the throne. And, uh, and so what I want to do this morning is just kind of read one verse. I, I'd, I'd love to read the whole story. It's about David and Goliath. But I want to read just one verse, and, um, and it kind of encapsulates the whole, whole thing, and then we'll kind of expound on it a little bit and, uh, and see how we can identify with it. <clears throat> First of all, in verse 33... And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. Now, David was getting ready to step up and take on Goliath. Now, Goliath, you know the story, probably saw uh, in Sunday school, flannel graph, big giant, nine foot, uh, nine and a half feet tall, all of the the weight and the size of his spear and <clears throat> the uh, shield and so forth. Now he comes out as the champion of, of uh, the Philistines and challenges the entire armies of Israel and for 40 days, 40 is a number for testing uh, in the Bible. And for 40 days, morning and evening, Goliath would come out and taunt all of Israel. The Bible says that Saul and all of Israel were afraid. Now Saul was a head and shoulders, we've already read that in, in days past, taller than all the men of Israel. And Goliath is probably three feet taller than him. So all of Israel is um, cowed down on one hill, the Philistines on another hill, and every day for 40 days, morning and evening, Goliath comes out to taunt them. Now here's David. <clears throat> David has been sent by his father with some food to give to his brothers. The three elder brothers of David are in Saul's army. They are suited up. They're ready to go. Uh, yet they're cowed down with the rest of the crew. So while David is there, <clears throat> Goliath comes out. And David hears what Goliath says. Now, David hears what Goliath says, and, and he makes this statement. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? Now, I'm not going to, I may preach a sermon on this next week or the week after called uh, conventional warfare. You see, all of Israel was looking at this war, this battle at, through conventional or worldly eyes and wisdom and standards. They're saying, we can't beat this guy, therefore we can't beat the Philistines. But David was unconventional. David knew that it was spiritual in nature versus physical. We're not going to get into all that today. But here's what we know. David looked over there and he saw all of the nation of Israel cowed down. And, uh, and so someone piped up and said, you know, whoever goes out there and fights that guy, uh, the king said he will give him and, and wins, the king will give to that person, his daughter for marriage, great riches, and will exempt him and his family from taxes. And I love, I love what it said, and, 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 and said, then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what, what, say that again, run, run that by me again. David couldn't believe it. He goes, 
You guys got an offer like that on the table and nobody's taking it. But see, David was a, he, he, he says, I'll do it. They take him to Saul and Saul looks at him and, and Saul makes the statement that we had. He said, you can't do it. Has anybody ever told you you can't do it? Maybe by choosing you last, you kind of got the message. You can't do it. You're not any good. You know, yeah, you know, Randy's on my team. You know, Beth's on my team. Uh, I'll take Elena. You know, I'll, I'll take, I'll take um, Gail. Uh, you know, they always say, they say, well, you get that and you get that and you get that. And then here's how they say the last one. And, and, and they'll say, Gail, Gail, you're on my team. You go, oh, that's not in, too enthusiastic. In other words, you guys don't think too much of me, right? Chose me last, you see. And they always say, I choose Randy. I choose Jeff. I choose David. I choose Steve. Beth, you're on my team. In other words, Beth, you're on my team, but I didn't choose you. You know, it's just like the numbers fell. And so David is a, David grew up in that environment. If you go all the way back to where God sent Samuel to anoint the next king in succession behind Saul, it was David. But you know what? The scripture says that Samuel came to Jesse, that's David's father, and told him to consecrate himself and his family and come to a feast that night and that he was going to anoint one of his boys as the next king. You know what Jesse did? Jesse did exactly what Samuel said, and he brought every son he had except David. The scripture says that David remained out in the field. He was the youngest. He remained out in the field with the sheep and the, and the uh, animals. And when God did not move upon Samuel to anoint any of the brothers, and Samuel had already said, that's him, that's him, that's him. God said, nope, nope, nope. You're looking outwardly. I'm looking inwardly at the heart. So Samuel looks at Jesse and says, is there not another, do you not have another son? He goes, well, the, you know, the, the youngest one's out in the field. Now imagine this, you're a brother in a family and your daddy has taken, is supposed to bring his entire family to the feast to be, one of them's going to be anointed king and you get left in the field. You get left in the field. Here's the message. You're, you're not him, okay? I don't know who it is, but you're not him. I don't know which one of my sons is going to be anointed, but you're not going to be anointed. You're not even coming to the party. You're going to stay in the field and you're going to do what you were told to do, partly because you're the baby, you're the youngest, but partly because you just don't have the goods. They're looking for a king and you don't match up. You're short. You're lightweight for, you know, for your size. Uh, you're just not the person that God would pick. And, and when he comes to Saul, you're not, the, you're not the guy that we would send. And then when he's standing there earlier before Saul makes this comment to him, his brothers, his three older brothers in succession, uh, Eliab, Amenadab, and Shammah, they look at him and say, what are you doing here? Did daddy send you up here with some food? Where's, where's those few little sheep you're supposed to be watching? They were shaming him because you know what you know what David was doing. David was displaying the heart of a warrior, and David was displaying faith in the God of Israel when all of the other people were cowing down, and they were they were mad at David because David was stepping up to the plate, and David was doing so against all the odds. He was not picked nor favored by his father. He was not looked upon, he was looked upon with great disdain and disgust and jealousy and envy by his brothers. He was looked upon as being ineffective, inefficient, I mean insufficient, and not equipped to go out to war. So from his father to his brothers to King Saul, everyone was telling David, you're not the man, you don't have the goods, you're not equipped. You're not supposed to be here. Get back where you're supposed to be. Find your place, David, and get in it and get out of our life. Leave the work to the men. This is a man's job. Yet none of the men were stepping up. So all of David's life, all of David's life, he was having to overcome the obstacles of life. People telling him that whether they used words or not by their actions, people were telling him, you don't have the goods. You're not the man. You're not going to make it. You'll never be able to do this. Saul looked at him and said, you can't do it. This man's been fighting longer than you've been alive, and you're just a youth. So 
uh, and we're not going to get into the rest of the story, but I just wanted to highlight on this. David, David's whole life was earmarked by against the odds. And sometimes I know that you feel like, and I feel like, and that people do, uh, that we are fighting uphill, that there's no one that has any confidence in you. People look at you when you get ready to do something for the Lord and say, you can't do that. You, you, you get ready to, uh, you know, you say, well, what do you want to be? Well, I want to be a doctor. Dude, man, you can't, you, can't get out of, you can't get out of geometry in high school. You can't do that. I want to own my own company. You can't conjugate a sentence. How in the world? You can't run... You can't run a lawnmower. How are you going to run a company? You know, you, people are always putting you down, looking at your inadequacies, looking at your failures, looking at your past performances, but what they can't see is your heart. And God sees your heart. And if you'll have faith in God, the Bible says, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if God says, get up there, I've got a calling for you to be a doctor, a veterinarian, own your own business, uh, that you're going, you know, you can be a great mother, you can overcome a broken home, you can overcome, uh, you know, bankruptcy, you can overcome um, mental breakdowns and illnesses, and you can, you can overcome uh, heart attacks, you can overcome, uh, you know, anxiety and depression, you can overcome it, you can beat all the odds, and if God's on your side, it's a majority. You and you, you and God are a majority. You and the Holy Spirit are a majority. So stop letting yourself and stop letting other people put a boundary around you by telling you what you can and can't do, what you are equipped to do, what you can do, what you're qualified to do. You have one qualification, and that is this. Do you want it? Do you want it? David wanted it. David wanted it. David desired it. And he said, God, God's going to give me the victory. You see, it doesn't take any effort to stay on the bottom. It doesn't take any, that's what David's brothers were. He, they thought just because they put the armor on and got in a crowd that they were warriors. They weren't warriors. They weren't leaders. They were followers. David had the desire to succeed, to excel, to take on difficult circumstances to take on difficult people like Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. Now, you know, what I would have done was just kill that joker the first chance I got. I stabbed him in the back. But, but Saul, David said, no, I'm, it's not my place to uh, assault the Lord's anointed. God will take care of it. So David, over and over again, exercised faith in God, a great desire uh, to be the king, to be a leader, to be uh, a fighter, he wanted, he wanted Michael. I mean, the king's daughter was the king's daughter. She was good looking. She was all that in a bag of chips. He said, I want that girl for himself. And they, you can't marry the king's daughter, you clod head. Look at you. You're redheaded. You're short and lightweight for your stature. She ain't gonna, he ain't gonna let the, his daughter marry you. What'd he do? He married her. Now, she turned out to be a hussy, but he married her anyway. She's pretty to look at, so he just put her over in the corner and told her to be quiet. But the point is, was that David was always going against the odds and succeeding because he had a great desire. David, God said in the New Testament, testifying of David, he's a man after my own heart. Well, what does that mean? It says he's got a heart. David had a heart of faith that loved God and he overcame every obstacle and overcame all the odds in his life because he had desire and because he had faith in God. I hope that helps you today. Listen, all it takes is a little desire and a little willingness to get up and do something about it. At the leadership, at the leading of God, not, not just presumptive now, but I'm talking about at the leading of God, whatever God lays on your heart to do and to be, go do it. Go be it. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. David, David didn't have a word from God. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I didn't want to get too much into it, but I'm, I'm going to put it right here. David did not have a word from God that said, David, go kill that, go kill that uh, Philistine giant. He never got a word from God. Now, I'm going to help somebody right here. I'm going to help him myself. Now, you listen to me. David never heard from God personally. We don't read it in here where he said, David, I've appointed you now to go 
kill this Philistine. This is it. Here's what David said. The Philistine Goliath came out and he defied God and laughed at Israel and cursed them by their gods and told them he's going to kill them, cut their heads off, make them their slaves. And here's what David said. Ready? Is there not a cause in Israel? In other words, guys, we got a problem here. And it's a problem because we have an uncircumcised, meaning out of the covenant. We got a giant over here that's out of the covenant. And he's threatening to kill the people of the covenant. And we got a problem. Who's going to stand up? Well, nobody. No one. No one stood up. So here's what David said. I'll do it. Not because he heard from God, but because there was a cause. Now, guys, there's some causes in this world that's worth fighting for. There's some causes in this world that we need to apply ourselves to. And you don't need a word from God to go do the right thing. You're supposed to do the right thing all the time. That is your calling. The cause is the call. There are orphans, okay? Your calling is to adopt them. There are homeless people. Your calling is to give them some clothes. You don't have to have a word from God. You see a man didn't have any clothes, you give him some. That's what you do. The cause is the call. You see people that are suffering, you alleviate it. You see a thirsty man, you give him some water. You see people that are down on their luck, you encourage them. Uh, you see people that are hungry, you take them food. You see a Sunday school class that doesn't have a teacher, you fill it. I mean, come on now. There's a cause. Go do it. God told us to go make disciples. He's not going to call you to the mission field individually. The cause is the call. Everywhere you go is the mission field. Everywhere we go, we, and you say, well, Pastor Randy, it's, it's hard. I know it's, it, the, you go again, you overcome the odds by trusting God in the middle of the cause. You see a cause, go do it. Somebody spills something in the floor at church, you don't go looking for someone to clean it up. You clean it up. The cause, that's the mess, is the call. Bam, you're it. So, so the point is, is that it doesn't matter how insignificant you are. It doesn't matter how, what you have in your hand. David didn't have anything but a sling. That's another story. He didn't have anything but a sling and a few rocks. Everybody else had weapons. The Bible said there was no sword in the hand of David. That's another odd. That's another, that's another obstacle that he had to overcome. Everybody else has swords. David didn't have a sword. Everybody else has shields. David didn't have a shield. Goliath has armor bearer. David didn't have an armor bearer. He's having to overcome all of these obstacles and he's being mocked by his brothers. He's being mocked by Goliath and, and literally he had a vote of no confidence from the king. He overcame all the odds because he said there's a call. There's a cause. There's a cause that's greater than all of my insecurities and all of my perceived inadequacies. I'm gonna go do it. Nobody else is gonna do it. I'm gonna go do it. And guys, that's how we're supposed to live our life. We don't have to wait for a committee to appoint us. We don't have to be nominated there. If you're waiting for somebody to nominate you to do something, you'll be here when Jesus comes back. Go do it. Whatever it is God's laid on your heart, go do it. Wherever you see a need, go do it. Even if it's for a little while. Hey, listen, if the house is on fire, all right, <clears throat> and you call the fire department, that's a good thing. But until the fire department gets there, how about putting a little water on it? I mean, just do what God's, overcome the odds. Go, go, and don't be limited by what the world says, by what your own mind says, by what your family says. David's family was against him. The king was against him. He had a vote of no confidence. Overcome the odds. You can do it. You can do it. You and God are a majority. If God's with you, you can do it, whatever it is. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Peace out.